These pieces are for the triple decky. Triple decky has, I guess, three, three parts to it. Top hat, a filament path, and the base. These are built for um, Sturdy Bunny. The bottom part here will go onto a piece of 2020 extrusion. I'm going to go ahead and see, show you how these parts, which were freshly printed, uh, are cleaned up because you're going to have to remove the support uh, pieces that you'll find, and I'll show you that in just a moment. We're going to start with the top part. The top part is the filament path. The filament goes through this little hole here. There's an ECAST collet which goes into here and it passes through. This top part needs to be removed. You can just get a screwdriver and pry up this little spot right there. You can see it. Should come out pretty cleanly if your printer's tuned well. You lift it out. There may be some support material that you need to clear out. There's some right here. Just clean that out. Doesn't take long. Just don't want anything loose hanging over there. Pretty good. Should be fine right there. Whoops. Alright, there's one tiny little piece right here. Just break it off. And that's pretty much it. You can see the part. C7.0. There's a small little dot right there. This is the clearance one version. Alright, next piece. This is the base. The base has a part right here where the trap is going to be inserted. I got a screwdriver. There's a little spot right here. You can kind of push down. You should be able to separate it. It should pop out like it did there. Small little piece. You're going to see there's a small channel right here where the trap is going to slide in. This is what a trap looks like. It's got a small little hole inside of it. There's the side. That shape That shape will match that piece that we just popped off. It's going to slide in. Oops, right, let's try that again. Slide it in like this. There you go. You can feel it's flush there. There's the hole. The filament's going to go through that. I'm going to take that off just to show you something. Let's go back to the top part. There's one other little piece. It's pretty easy to see. It's on the edge there. You just pop that off. That little corner there. Here's the base. Here's the top. There's a little channel right here. This part will slide in and it should be is that, that loose and simple. There shouldn't be any resistance. You should just fall, even fall back down. That's the kind of clearance you want. If it's not like that, then print out another part. Maybe you'll adjust, adjust your extrusion multiplier, your flow. Uh, dial it down a couple percent, two and a half percent, three percent if you need to. But you really want it to be like that. It's really important, I think. Okay, so let's move on. So once you've verified that and you're happy with these parts, you can start putting the magnets in. You can put up to four magnets, but um, you only really need two probably in the center. You don't need it on the sides like that. You should have these very strong magnets. Push it in. Push down if you need to. Do the same thing here. If you kept your stack of magnets oriented so that you just put one down and put another one down, you'll find that these will now be opposing one another. They, they don't want to attract, they want to repel. So that way, 
You'll see that it just it's like a spring. It really doesn't want to go down there. And that's what you want. So now we got the magnets in. Next up, next up are these Bondec, Bontech, or BMG style gears. So they have these little needle bearings, these pin bearings. You're going to want to find the one that doesn't have a set screw. This is the one. This one has a hole for a set screw. That one is going to be on the shaft. Set that one aside. You're going to have two of these bearings. Slide one in here and in here. Ideally you want these greased. You can get some white lithium grease or that, that other lube and you put some in you pack those bearings and you push them in. But for demonstration purposes, I'll just show you what you're going to do. These are going to go into the top hat. You can kind of see the, the shape of it. You'll know which one is which. So put the gear in there. You're going to press fit these in. It's going to be a tight fit, but that's what you want. You can push these down by hand. Um, you can get channel lock pliers, big ones, push them down. You can put them into a press. You can push them down by hand and try to try to get that going. Let's see what I can do here. Push it down. You can see that's almost there. Just continue that until it's all the way pushed in there. I'm not going to do that because I need to grease these up still, but you can kind of see what's going on there. All right, let's continue on. You're going to want to put the trap in. Pray not extras of these traps. They do break. When you put them in, they should go in fine. Slide right in. There are two versions of this. There's one that has a tiny set screw in it, and then there's just the plain V-style traps like these. You're going to kind of have to finagle this. Get it in. You're going to see that it's going to not quite hit that hole, the trap. But if you are careful, you should be able to slide them in like that. There's a latch. Latch goes in there. You're going to use an M3 by 16. Um, I like to just slide this in this way first. This is an M3 by 12, but you're going to want to use an M3 by 16. Get it in there. Get a tool. Screw it in. Be careful. You don't want to break that little piece that's on here. You don't need to really, if it breaks, it's, a, it's actually fine. It's the screw itself that's gonna act as your axis, your pivot. The piece that I was talking about is this little piece right here. You don't wanna break that off. It can break off right at the base. But yeah, slide your latch in. I don't want to snap it in yet because I might break that piece off. So let me just line it up, slide it in. That way it's got some support. Start screwing it in. And you just push down and just do that. Okay, here it's starting to tap itself into the plastic. So I gotta push down to make that happen. Okay, once it bottoms out, back off maybe a half turn. I should be able to open it up. Make sure it doesn't wobble too much. It's a little bit of a wobble. Tighten that up. Okay. It's not loose though. Too tight. Back it off a little bit. That looks pretty good. Tiny bit more. Okay. There's no crazy play. It's pretty good. But it moves freely. So yeah, this should snap in. It's good. You'd have the gear in, but I didn't put it in. But I showed that earlier. This little piece there goes in like this. It should just flop in. That latches. Double check everything. And that's almost there. When you assemble this and you actually put it all together, let me lift this apart. And this is where it can break the trap. Yeah, see, it, it actually just broke. You're not really meant to open it up and close that all the time. You're going to put the other piece, the piece with the set screw. You're going to lay it in here. 
and then you might want to lay it in with the sit screw on top facing you. When you assemble this into the actual rest of the assembly, you're going to have the D-shaft It's going to slide into place. You're going to line it up and you're going to tighten that set screw. But you don't do that until it's, it's put together. But basically this is what the assembly looks like for the filament block. Clean up the parts, remove the supports, screw in the latch, do a quick test fit, make sure it feels right, put in the trap last, and um, do the rest when you assemble everything together.